Hello, my name is um, Elaine Worrell. I am a professor of child neurology and director of pediatric epilepsy at the Mayo Clinic in, in Rochester, Minnesota. And I wanted to talk today about um, seizure safety and risk of, of injury to children who have had seizures and epilepsy. And the import, most important thing that I think I have to say with that is the risk of um, uh, seizure-related injury in children is actually very rare. Um, however, because seizures occur usually without uh, any warning and there um, most often are not any provoking factors, um, we do need to have uh, some precautions in place for children who have had seizures. The um, amount of precautions really depend on uh, the severity of the epilepsy, how often the seizures are happening, and also on the type of seizure that is happening. And um, while we want to keep children safe and we want to make sure that appropriate precautions are in place, we also don't want to uh, overprotect the child um, uh, because I think it's really important to have that child participate in as much normal activities um, in order to uh, really um, maximize their uh, physical well-being and also their social and emotional well-being. So we need to find the right balance, what is um, uh, overprotection and what is enough um, precautions to keep them safe. Um, so a lot of people have questions about what types of sports children who have had seizures can participate in. And the answer there is they can participate in nearly all sports. We do recommend that uh, a child who has had seizures avoid certain high-risk sports, and that would be sports such as scuba diving, um, uh, skydiving, bare hand rock climbing, where if they did have a seizure it could have very catastrophic results. Um, with regards to swimming and water sports, because a seizure can occur without warning, it is very, very important for a child who is swimming or undertaking any sort of water sports to be directly supervised by an adult. Um, but it is certainly um, encouraged that they should participate in those types of sports. I think it's important if they're doing any uh, swimming um, uh, in a lake or uh, water sports uh, in an outside area, such as a river or lake, that they do have an appropriate uh, life jacket on uh, in, in place. Um, generally, the other thing that we recommend is that the children don't climb higher than they are tall, because again, if they had a seizure and they would fall, that could have very serious results. But other sports are to be encouraged and are actually quite safe. Many parents wonder if their child with epilepsy can uh, be involved in contact sports such as soccer or football, and generally that is not contraindicated in a child who has epilepsy. So we would not uh, limit the child with epilepsy from playing football or from playing soccer in the majority of cases. Um, other uh, sort of everyday activities, um, probably the biggest risk for a child with epilepsy is uh, in a bathtub. Um, when we look at, um, at bathtub drownings, um, particularly in uh, patients who are old enough to sort of not drown, so not sort of beyond the infancy range, um, about half of bathtub drownings occur in people with epilepsy, and that is very much overrepresented um, uh, for those with epilepsy. So the, the most dangerous place for a person with epilepsy is actually alone in the bathtub. Because of that, we recommend that people who have epilepsy should uh, shower instead of bathe. And um, for uh, children who are in the bathtub, it is important that they have one-to-one -one supervision by a parent, and the parent must be actually in the room with the child, so they should not run out to answer the doorbell, to answer the phone. That parent must be um, in the room 100% of the time while the child is in the bathtub. Um, we're often asked about, you know, what is the risk of uh, falls or burns or other, uh, other concerns. And generally for most people with epilepsy, if their seizures are well controlled, there should not be a major risk of, uh, of them, say, cooking uh, on a stove or things like that, preparing food. They should be able to do that on their own. Um, oftentimes people wonder, can their child with epilepsy partake in activities such as sleepovers? And that's something that we would encourage because sleep deprivation is, um, is a potential risk for worsening seizures. It's, incur it's important to speak to your child who is going to the sleepover to make sure that the sleep happens um, and that they do get to sleep at an adequate time. But otherwise sleep, uh, sleepovers are, are encouraged. I think it's really good for the social development of the child. It's also important to um, uh, be sure that where the child is going to the sleepover that the uh, other family is aware of the potential risk of epilepsy and uh, what to do if the child should have a seizure, um, making sure that they know to roll them onto their side, nothing in their mouth, um, and they need to know when to call uh, for emergency help. And that's usually um, uh, if the child's seizure is going on for five minutes or longer. 
Um, oftentimes, uh, te uh, teenagers wonder if they are able to do such things as babysitting, and I think that a, a teenager who has well-controlled epilepsy, who's compliant on medications, there should not be a problem with them babysitting or partaking in part-time jobs. So with, with regards to driving, um, the laws of driving are really dictated um, by the individual state, so um, it would be important to ensure that if you are driving that um, your seizure control um, is adequate for you to be legally driving in that state. Many families wonder how long the precaution should be in place. For a child who's had a single seizure, the highest risk for seizure recurrence is in the first six months, and I think there still is a significantly uh, increased risk over the two-year period. So we generally recommend that those risks or those precautions be in place for two years uh, from the time of the last uh, seizure. For a child who has epilepsy, if their seizures have been well controlled for two years and they are stable on medication, um, one can ease up a little bit on, on uh, the precautions. However, when one is looking at weaning off medication, that is again a time of um, uh, increased risk for seizure recurrence, and so those precautions need to be put in place and probably kept in place until the child is two years off medication without any recurrence. So there are some special cases where extra precautions may be needed, and that's really in the minority of children. So we do have children who are having very, very frequent seizures, particularly very frequent seizures resulting in falls, or very frequent what we call grand mal or generalized tonic clonic seizures, and those children certainly do need um, uh, more careful watching and in that situation, um, uh, they would be potentially at risk of uh, sudden falls, which um, means that they could injure themselves if they were, for example, um, uh, cooking at a stove or if they were close to a fire. So those children need to have extra precautions in place. For any child with epilepsy, it is important to have a rescue plan in place. And the rescue plan is in place for a child who has a prolonged seizure. And by prolonged seizure, we usually mean longer than three to five minutes or a child who is having a cluster of seizures, so goes from one seizure into another seizure into another seizure. And in that situation, there is a risk um, of potential injury to that child from the seizures themselves. So it's important to have a rescue plan in place that would be discussed with your physician, hopefully before such, uh, such an event would happen. And uh, many times we will recommend that the family have available a medication, a rescue medication that be, can be given. Um, there's a number of different, re different uh, types of rescue medications. Some of those are uh, given into the mouth, what we call into the, the buccal or the cheek cavity. Other times the medicines can be uh, given rectally. Um, or, um, or intranasally through the nose. Um, and those medicines are designed to stop the seizure or the cluster of seizures before they cause injury to the child. And we usually recommend that uh, the child is given those medications if they have a seizure lasting longer than three to five minutes or if they have three or more seizures in an hour. And so it's important to discuss uh, a rescue plan with your physician to ensure that you have that available availability close by should your child have a cluster of seizures or a prolonged seizure. So there's one other uh, point that I would like to address, and that is um, the, the concern of um, SUDEP, or sudden unexplained death in epilepsy. Um, this is uh, fortunately a very rare condition, but obviously a very worrisome condition um, for families who have loved ones with seizures. And we don't understand exactly what causes this, but the uh, general story is, is a child or a young adult um, who goes to bed who is then uh, found having passed away um, uh, the following morning. We don't know the exact cause. We think that there may be a, uh, an effect on the heart or the lungs or the brainstem that controls breathing and heart rate um, as a result of a seizure, but the exact cause is really unclear. And fortunately, this is exceedingly rare. Um, uh, however, the best thing that can be done to, um, to avoid this happening is improving seizure control. So the highest risk um, uh, uh, for sudden unexplained death and epilepsy are uh, children and uh, young adults who are having frequent generalized tonic-clonic seizures, particularly at night. And so in that situation, it is uh, very, very important to try and maximize seizure control. Um, uh, to be very adherent with medications that your doctor is prescribing. And if those medicines are not working to control seizures, it's really important to have that discussion with your doctor to see what other options are available, be they other medications, diet therapies, surgeries, to try and stop those seizures.